USPS helps identity thieves steal your mail, a DJI vulnerability is listed as high risk, and will election security ever improve? All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for November 13th, 2018. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. I've got big news this week. Patrons over at patreon.com slash threatwire now have access to a security bulletin, which is brought to you by the folks at Daily Tech News Show. So if you want access to exclusives like that, check out the Patreon link in the show notes below. And special thanks to our newest Patreon supporters, Frank, Peter, and Joe. I would love to see us hit the next goal for ThreatWire by the end of this year, so it's coming up fast. So if you have been considering supporting the show, now's a great time. And now, on to the news. Last year, a free service by the U.S. Postal Service called Inform Delivery went live for most of the U.S., though it has been in a pilot program with a small amount of addresses since 2014. Inform Delivery offers customers a way to see a digest of scanned images of the outer contents of mail before it arrives every day. It also includes tracking numbers and sender info for packages as well. That's pretty cool, right? Also, it's a little bit worrying. As Brian Krebs via Krebs on Security pointed out a year ago, this could be used for identity thieves, private investigators, or stalkers. The problem is due to USPS's lack of validation or verification for new account signups and their seemingly hard opt-out procedures. When you sign up, the program asks for your name, address, and email address, along with answering four knowledge-based authentication questions, those of which can be easily guessed with a little bit of recon. This means that if a stalker or an abuser knew your name and address, plus a few easily guessable answers like your address that you previously lived in Florida or something like that, they could sign up with their own email address and then track your incoming mail. Just last week, it seems that these warnings were quite telling. The U.S. Secret Service sent out an alert to law enforcement nationwide explaining that informed delivery is, in fact, being used by identity thieves. Huh. Who would have thought? The alert made reference to a case in Michigan in which several people were arrested for using informed delivery to intercept mail, notably credit cards, from mailboxes of victims that they had signed up on the program's website. It's unsure how the thieves were able to steal this mail when the home should have received a physical notification that someone had signed up for informed delivery, but it is suspected that the criminals would sign up for the cards then sign up for informed delivery, then steal the card before the physical notification from USPS actually came in the mail explaining that somebody had signed up for informed delivery. So why is this possible? Well, if you aren't already signed up for an informed delivery account, a thief could sign up for you and just have those notifications sent to their email address. Another stickler, even if you sign up, another person can sign up too as another adult member of your household. So one way to divert attacks is to ensure that each adult in your household has an account. The USPS just this year started alerting people by physical mail if someone had signed up with their address for informed delivery, but even then, as mentioned, a thief could still steal mail before you receive that notification in the mail. Krebs also notes that if you put a credit freeze on your credit report, then the knowledge-based authentication questions would be blocked, so you won't be able to sign up for informed delivery but that would only be for your account, not for any other accounts in your household. Lastly, it does appear that you can opt out by emailing esafe at usps.gov, but that does not seem to be a surefire way, and you would have to have all adults in your household opt out, not just you. Now, while the USPS informed delivery does sound like a very useful tool for folks who travel or who receive a lot of mail and they need to stay on top of their mailbox, this does have some pretty big vulnerabilities. So should USPS remove the KBA questions from the signup and replace them with, I don't know, some other kind of verification? I would love to know your thoughts below. In a recently publicized report, security firm Checkpoint disclosed a major vulnerability in DJI's online cloud platform, which could disclose account data, including visuals, to an attacker. The vulnerability could allow an attacker to access private photos and videos from drone flights if a user had synced them with DJI's cloud servers, user account information, flight logs including location data, and even real-time data including drone location, drone microphone, and a live camera feed. 
Potentially, an attacker could even take over a user's account. They could also see the last four digits for the account's credit card, and if a user was using the DJI Flight Hub tool, they could control multiple drones and set routes as well. A user would not know that any of this was happening. Checkpoint Research responsibly disclosed this to DJI, and DJI fixed it, while also stating that the attack had low probability, and they had no evidence of this ever occurring in the wild. Now, with that said, it was still classified as a high-risk vulnerability. The problem persisted in DJI's cloud infrastructure, which would allow a user to stay logged in seamlessly across all of DJI's platforms. This is called single sign-on, and it enables an active token on a user's account so they don't have to plug in their login information each time they move from one app or platform to another. Checkpoint found a DJI.com issue that allowed them to enter in their own JavaScript to query data using a cross-site scripting issue. They then found a vulnerability on the forums, which would allow them to create a a malicious link that would steal user cookies and send that data from DJI over to their own server. The stolen information, the access tokens, and the user cookie allowed for users to stay logged in across platforms. The access token bypasses two-factor authentication so the attacker could move in without causing any kind of red flags. Lastly, Checkpoint also gained access to user accounts via the mobile app by using a man-in-the-middle attack in a security program called Burp Suite, which would attack an SSL pinning issue in the application. According to a DJI spokesperson, this vulnerability was disclosed through their bug bounty program, and as such, Checkpoint would receive several thousand dollars as reward, but Checkpoint did not request payment. Now, while the DJI drones are consumer-friendly, their diverse ecosystem and third-party integrations allowed for this kind of vulnerability. DJI fixed the issue in September, and users do not need to take any steps for their own account security. Checkpoint Research advises IT admins and network admins to use segmentation as a policy to ensure that vulnerabilities like this are contained and limited. This week's top story Patreon pick is all about voting in the US and the horrible voting machine security that we got to see during this year's election cycle. Midterms just ended in the United States and it was big news no matter what your stances are, but the biggest news for us here is the security news. Harry Hursty, who is the founder of Nordic Innovation Labs and an election security expert, reported to Motherboard that he and his colleagues had acquired a reference manual for a voting machine vendor while conducting a risk assessment on a county election office. This manual was found in the office, and it listed usernames and passwords for the tabulation system, including but not limited to the administrator and root password. And the manual requests that the user, when instructed to change their password, do so by changing it back and forth between two easily guessable passwords and then writing down the new password in the manual. The system in question is called the Open Elect Voting System, made by Unison Voting Solutions, and the manual refers to the management system for these devices, and that's called the Open Elect Central Suite. Hursty thought this was a simple mistake by the third-party vendor who worked with this county for management of the systems, but he came across the same exact thing in another state with the same systems, but not that third-party vendor. This means that the manual came from the voting machine vendor. The Election Assistance Commission specifies federal rules about changing passwords, but the open elect systems were bypassing this and abusing the policy. Unison distributes their systems to 3,629 jurisdictions, and they operate in 12 states. So they could be offering bad security procedures to more than 3,500 different places. Now, furthermore, according to Boston Globe, many election officials and voter data have been targeted by attackers just prior to the midterms. Specifically, attackers were targeting voter registration databases, election officials, and networks, according to the Department of Homeland Security. They use malicious code and massive amounts of requests for voter registration forms, and they have had limited success, but it's still success. In total, 160 reports have been filed about election attacks since August 1st, with recent weeks seeing upwards of 10 attacks per day. Now, there is no information pointing to who carried out the attacks, but the DHS points to incidents being foreign-based. Now, the Boston Globe did not link to the government DHS document, but I have provided a couple of links in the show notes from the DHS that relate to this exact topic. 
Now, as Ars Technica points out, while there is a federal standard for voting security and privacy and the Election Assistance Commission certifies systems, 20 states do not mandate their elections up to that federal level. There are no penetration tests or audits, nor is there a third party verified and mandated to do these kind of reports on election systems. The DHS does offer some limited testing, but many states outright deny their help. This news and all the DEF CON voting system village hacks and all the information that we have seen leading up to the midterms are a sign that we need to beef up security and privacy for voters and our election systems. It'll take years to get all the states under the same level of scrutiny, but it's well needed in this time of connectivity. Like I mentioned previously, I want to hit that next goal on Patreon to do a monthly live Q&A just for all of our patrons. So if you are interested in getting access to that, along with a slew of other extras, even if it's just one or two bucks a month, hit that button to become a Patreon supporter because it all helps and it shows me that you appreciate the work that I'm putting into this show. So thank you to our patrons. Also a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them. Keep them coming. They are so cute. They make me so happy. Hit that subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social media page as well. And with that, I am Shannon Morse and I will see you on the internet.